Hey there, so here is an unconventional introduction to Mojo. And the reason I call it unconventional is because I don't want to start with a Hello World application to show you the first steps, your first steps in the Mojo language. Instead, I'm going to start with a working Python script and show you how easy it is to turn it into Mojo and how fast we can run that script after we run it using Mojo. Here's the thing. Mojo will be a superset of Python. And I say will be because Mojo is not ready yet. We're still working on it. But when Mojo is done, uh, and you can use it to run any Python script. Right now, we have to make small modifications. And that is the goal of today's video. I want to get you excited with Mojo. I want you to see what a fast Python looks like. And over the next few weeks, I'm going to be publishing a series of videos uh, showing you uh, the different aspects of Mojo. As I learn the language, I want you to follow along and see how cool it is. So let's get started with, uh, with this script here. Before we look at the code, I want you to go and search for the Get Started with Mojo guide. You're going to find this online. And here, it's, there is a section called Requirements where you're going to see how to install Mojo on your Mac computer, your Linux computer, or your Windows computer. You're gonna need WSL for Windows, and you're gonna need to have an Apple Silicon uh, Mac computer if you want to run Mojo. And obviously, uh, here you're gonna be able to run your first Hello World Mojo application. There is an entire guide about the language basics. So you can start right here. After you do this, then I want you to open the script that I'm sharing should be somewhere down the description of this video below. There is a GitHub repo. I'm going to start adding all of my code related to learning Mojo into that repo so you can follow along. And you're going to start with the Hello World section. And you're going to see there is a folder Hello World and there is a search.py inside. That is the script that I want to show you. Um, I want to translate into Mojo too, so you can see the differences in performance. Uh, like I mentioned before, Mojo will be a superset. So in the future, we should be able to get this script and run it in Mojo with no modifications whatsoever. Right now, that is not possible, okay? So right now, we're gonna have to translate the script. Uh, not a big deal, but you're gonna have to do that right now just because the language is not ready yet. So here's what the script does. It's a very simple script. It contains a binary search function that is gonna take a sorted array and an element, and it's going to find the position of that element in that array. That's it. It's a very, very straightforward binary search implementation. Okay, that's the function. Then there is a second function that's called main, which is going to set up the whole experiment that we're trying to do here. I start with declaring this constant, and it's going to be 1 million. And then I, I initialize an array, it's an empty array, and I start adding numbers to that array. So the array is going to come out sorted on the other side. Again, nothing fancy. I just want to create something that's very, very simple. I initialize uh, results as another empty array. I'm going to use this variable to accumulate the results of the binary search function. And then I'm going to time this portion here. Okay, this code is the one that I want to time to see how long it takes to execute this functionality. This is what I'm timing. I'm going to go 1 million times and I'm going to call the binary search function consecutively 1 million times. And I'm just going to accumulate those values in the result array. Executing this is what matters here. That's what I want to measure in Python. And then when we port this code over Mojo, I want to measure that on Mojo. Okay. I'm using the time function here to capture the time. And then I'm using it again here to capture the time after we execute the function. And obviously I compute how much time has passed and I multiply by a thousand because the result of time is in seconds and I want to return milliseconds. That's what I want to print. That's it. At the end of the program, the only thing that I do is I print how many results I added. I should get a million just to make sure everything is working fine. And then I call the main function. That's my code. So let's now execute this code. I'm going to use Python 3. I'm going to call the search function. And it takes 14, 14 milliseconds to run. Let's do it again. 1405. Let's do it 
one more time, 1406. All right, so that's how long it takes. So 1.4 seconds total to run the binary search function 1 million times. Now, what I want to do is take this code and translate it loosely using the word translated into Mojo. I want to run this script in Mojo. Again, the translation happens because Mojo, even though will be a superset, is not a superset yet. So we're going to have to make small modifications to it. So I'm going to just take this search file, copy and paste it again. So I'm just basically duplicating the search file and then I'm going to rename search. I'm going to use search.mojo. By the way, you can also use in Mojo the fire icon emoji as the extension of the file, which I think is super fun. I'm not going to do that here, but you can do it. Uh, notice how Visual Studio Code recognizes the Mojo extension. When you install Mojo, you will find a section explaining how to install the Mojo extension if you're using Visual Studio Code. You should do that, obviously. Okay, so now that we have our search.mojo, let me close this one here. You will notice that there are certain errors in the code. This is what I was saying, Mojo is not a superset yet. So we're gonna have to do a little bit of translation here. Let's start with the easiest one, and it's this one here. So this is what we call a five level uh, instruction or a statement or a call, right? We're calling the function main from a file at the file level here. Mojo does not support that right now. So you cannot have statement, you cannot have A plus B here. You cannot have any statement at the file level. So fortunately for us, what Mojo, the way Mojo works is it's gonna find a main function inside your script. Okay, so if you're trying to run a Mojo script, you need to have a main function and that will be the entry point of everything. You cannot have anything at the file level. You need to have anything that you want to execute inside a main function. And that's exactly what we have here. So we just, we can just get rid of the main call and everything is gonna happen starting from this point on. Okay, so that's the first problem. That problem uh, is out. The second problem are with the arrays, okay? So Mojo has a standard library and I have it right here. Here it is. So the documentation of the standard library, you're gonna find it here where it says APIs in the Mojo website. And the standard library is open source, which is great. Every time Mojo uh, releases something new, they have a ton of changes to this standard library. They're making this standard library as close to Python as possible. So obviously as they make progress, uh, all of those little mistakes and little uh, discrepancies will go away because Mojo will become more connected to Python. So right now in the standard library, if you go to collections, uh, they offer a bunch of different collections that you can use. I want to use the list collection. So this is how you import it, right? You're gonna import it from collections, import the list. And this list, this is really important. The list type is a dynamically allocated list, which is exactly what I want to use here because that's the way Python works. When we define an array in Python, what we want to do is you don't define a size for it, just define a dynamically uh, dynamic array. So as you start adding elements to that array, the language is going to start uh, requesting more memory and allocating that memory just so it can fit all of those elements. So that's exactly what I'm going to do here. I'm going to come and I'm going to say, hey, I want a list. Okay. The types that I'm going to be storing into this list are going to be in 32. And that's it. That's how I'm gonna define my list. By the way, I'm doing that here. I'm also doing that right here, right? In this result. I'm gonna be using those lists instead of using just the little, the, the open and, and close bracket array, little. So that will get rid of all of the problems that I had appending values to that array. So after that, the second or the next problem is with the time function. If we go to the standard library and look for time, let's see, here it is. So time inside the, this, this library or this package, we have a now function, which does exactly the same work as time, but in this case, it returns the time in nanoseconds. So we're gonna have to change our conversion. So first of all, let's just find time here and let's replace it for now, not this one here. So we're gonna use, oops, Sorry, 
We're gonna use the now function. I don't know what happened here, but let me just go back. Okay, yeah, now it's better. Time, okay, now I'm using the now function, but this conversion is not longer accurate because we're going from nanoseconds to milliseconds. So instead of multiplying by a thousand, we have to divide by a million, okay? So now this is going to print the time in nanoseconds. Awesome. And the next top is right here. There is a problem called in binary search. Let's see what's going on. Invalid call to binary search. Argument zero cannot be converted from a list to an object. Here is what's going on. So Mojo assumes that these two arguments are objects. So because we're not defining the type Mojo is making the assumption that they are objects. And now it's telling us that it cannot convert a list in 32 to an object. It doesn't know how to make that conversion, okay? And probably the same thing or something similar will happen with the, with, the second, with the second argument here. Let's start with the first argument and let's fix it by specifying that the function is going to be receiving a list in 32, okay? All right, so I fixed that. Going back, let's see what the problem is right now. Okay, so now the problem is invalid call to append. Method argument zero cannot be converted from an object to an in32, okay? So what's happening right now is that results is expecting an in32, but the output of binary search, because we have not specified the type of the return value, is assumed by Mojo to be an object and it cannot convert that object into an in32 to append it to the result. So we fix that by specifying the output of the binary search, the type of the output of the binary search, which is gonna be an in32. So now this problem is gone, but we have another problem here. Let's see what it is. It says, okay, we cannot call the less than because the colleague expects at least two positional parameters, but zero were specified. The problem here, again, is gonna be with this, the type of this X here, that is supposed to be an object. So if I change that to an in32, now we can do a comparison with this value here, which is an in32, and this value here, which is an in32. So now this seems to be ready to go. By doing those small modifications, as a summary, we had to specify the types in order to call the binary search. We had to change some of the libraries that we were using, uh, like we were using time, and that is not yet supported. They have now, we had to translate that. We had to keep uh, change this conversion. We had to change the type of the arrays. By doing those, now the code is ready to go in module. Notice that everything else, the way we run the loops, the conditions, all of that stays the same because Mojo, again, tries to be Python as much as possible. All right, so how do we run this? Well, we're gonna use the Mojo command to run this Mojo script. So let's do search.mojo and brace yourselves. When we execute this, it only takes 68 milliseconds. So. 68 instead of 1406, Let's, let me run it a couple more times. Yes, it's 68 instead of 1406. I'm gonna bring my calculator, 1406 divided by 68. That is 20 times faster. By just moving the code from one language to the other, we got a 20X improvement, which is pretty significant. And we're not even starting yet. I'm not gonna go through all of those details. I'm gonna leave those for a separate video, but there are a bunch of new features that Mojo brings to the table that can improve this a little bit more. Like we can turn this function into an FN function, which is a little bit different. We can declare all of these variables when we do that. Uh, all of these parameters, we're not gonna need to make copies for them because they're gonna become immutable. So there is a bunch of little tricks that we are going to be covering on future videos that are gonna let, let us take something like this and make it even more performant. So I don't know about you, I'm super, super stoked about Mojo. I cannot wait 
for the language to keep improving so we can start using it in production applications. And that is exactly what I'm recording these videos because I wanna be ready when the time comes, I want to be ready to start taking my Python scripts and start changing them to Mojo. So subscribe for more videos and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.